Greetings! I am your instructor, Michael Angela Maglake, a registered psychometrician, and we will talk about psychological assessment, its history and contributors. First, we will talk about the history of psychological assessment, early beginnings of testing the Chinese civilization. It is a primitive form of proficiency testing existed in China as early as 2200 BCE, where some form of examination of public officials by the Chinese emperor was conducted every third year. The civil service examinations began in China during the Chan Dynasty in 115 BCE and ended in 1905 when a reform measure abolished the system. For 3,000 years, the open and competitive system of examinations in China provided for evaluation of proficiency in areas such as music, archery, horsemanship, writing, and arithmetic. Proficiency was also examined with respect to skill in the rites and ceremonies of public and social life, civil law, military affairs, agriculture, revenue, and geography. One of the things that we need to remember in the history of psychological assessment are the Greeks. For ancient Greece, if not test-dominated society, they are certainly a test-influenced one. The Greeks were very much interested in mental and physical testing, and in practice as well as theory, devised a rather studied sequence of ability testing. The abilities they measured represented the different facets of the ideal Greek citizen. Since the vocation of every Greek was to be a good citizen, they considered these abilities and this test primarily a vocational nature. Sparta's goal was to prepare young men for military service than in Athens, where the less narrow definition of good citizenship allowed greater variety in education of the individual. Fascinating from a historical perspective are the Greco-Roman writings that proposed various physiological bases for personality and temperament. Their tests were used to measure intelligence and physical skills. It was also evident in the history of psychological assessment are the results from the European universities. These universities relied on formal exams in conferring degrees and honors. They believed that a child who thrives in a loving and secured family environment tends to do well in terms of intelligence because their environment gives opportunities for learning and growth. The maternal effect may successfully integrate the family. And they also had the research about the effect model where some researchers believe that the family environment begins inside a mother's womb. During the 19th century, Charles Darwin published the book entitled The Origin of Species by Means of Natural Selection. In this important far-reaching work, he argued that chance variation in a species would be selected or rejected by nature according to adaptivity and survival value. He further argued that humans had descended from the ape as a result of such chance genetic variations. He also believed that despite our similarities, no two humans are exactly alike. Some of these individual differences are more adapted than others and these differences lead to more complex intelligent organisms over time. Francis Galton also in the course of his efforts to explore and quantify individual differences between people, 
he became an extremely influential contributor to the field of measurement. He aspired to classify people according to their natural gifts and to a certain deviation from an average. Along the way, Galton was credited with devising or contributing to the development of many contemporary tools of psychological assessment, including questionnaires, rating scales, and self-report inventories. Galton's initial work on heredity was done with sweet peas, in part because there tended to be fewer variations among the peas in a single pod. In this work, he pioneered the use of a statistical concept central to psychological experimentation and testing, the coefficient of correlation. Although Carl Persson developed product moment correlation technique, the roots of this technique can be traced directly to the work of Galton. From heredity in peace, Galton's interest turned to heredity in humans and various ways of measuring aspects of people and their abilities. He was also known as the father of psychometrics, the father of eugenics, and the father of the testing movement. Another famous psychologist, Wilhelm Max Wundt, believed that assessment was also an important part of an activity as he experimented on the first experimental psychology laboratory he founded at the University of Leipzig in Germany. He is a medical doctor whose title at the university was Professor of Philosophy. One and his students tried to formulate a general description of human abilities with respect to variables such as reaction time, perception, and attention span. In contrast to Galton, one focused on questions relating to how people were similar, not different. In fact, individual differences were viewed by Wundt as a frustrating source of error in experimentation. James McKean Cattell is one of the American students of Wundt. He completed a doctoral dissertation that dealt with individual differences, specifically individual differences in reaction time. He is also a contact of Galton. And Cattell returned to the University of Pennsylvania in 1888. Then he coined the term mental test in an 1890 publication. For 26 years, he trained many psychologists and founded a number of publications such as Psychological Review, Science, and American Men of Science. It so happened that some of James McKean Cattell's classmates under their professor Wundt also has contributed things in the history of psychological assessment. We have Charles Spearman, who is one of the many students of Wundt, was credited with originating the concept of test reliability, as well as building the mathematical framework for factor analysis. Victor Henry is the Frenchman student who collaborated with Alfred Adler on papers suggesting how mental tests could be used to measure higher mental processes. Emil Kraepelin was an early experimenter with the word association technique as a form of formal testing. After the contributions of the students of Wund declares the end of the 19th century. As the entry of the 20th century, the early 90s witnessed the birth of the first formal tests of intelligence. There was initially great receptivity to instruments that could purportedly measure mental characteristics. At first, intelligence and later other characteristics such as those related to personality, interest, attitudes, and values. 
At the beginning of the 20th century, Alfred Binet is already starting to make a name for himself. Alfred Binet had envisioned a broadening of testing to include the measurement of cognitive abilities. As early as 1895, Binet and his colleague Victor Henry, a student of one, published several articles in which they argued for the measurement of abilities such as memory and social comprehension. Ten years later, Binet and his collaborator Theodore Simon published a 30-item measuring scale of intelligence designed to help identify mentally retarded Paris school children. The Binet test underwent a lot of revisions and translations, and in the process, launched both the intelligence testing movement and clinical testing movement. Before long, psychological tests were used in settings as diverse as juvenile courts, reformatories, prisons, children's homes, and schools. During the 20th century, David Weschler is also starting to contribute in the history of psychological assessment. So David Weschler is a clinical psychologist at the Bellevue Hospital in New York City. He introduced a test designed to measure adult intelligence, defined as the aggregate or global capacity of individual to act purposefully, to think rationally, and to deal effectively with his environment. The test, originally called the Weschler Bellevue Intelligence Scale, was revised and renamed the Weschler Adult Intelligence Scale or WISE. The WISE has since been periodically revised and is used until the present day. One of the most memorable event that occurred in the history of psychological assessment is the World War. A natural outgrowth of the individually administered intelligence test devised by Binet was the group intelligence test. So group intelligence test came into being in the United States in response to the military's need for an efficient method of screening the intellectual ability of World War I recruits. Because of military manpower needs during World War I, World War II, psychologists were enlisted into government service to develop, administer, and interpret group psychological tests. Thus, after the World War, leaving the psychologist, the psychometrician, to have vast set of experiences in the field of psychological assessment. I hope you have learned few things about the brief history of psychological assessment and its contributors. So thank you for watching. I'm not requiring but I'm hoping that you would subscribe for more lecture video presentations. Thank you and God bless.